All right, joining us this morning, we have Arizona Senator Martha McSally. Senator, I want to thank you so much for being with Absolutely. us this morning. Uh, a lot to get to today, a lot yeah. in the news right now, so I want to get right into it. First, I want to ask you, a couple weeks ago, you had called the impeachment inquiry a total distraction. Do you still feel that way, and why? Well, it's great to be back in Arizona. I've been out visiting with people in the state for the last week and a half, and I'll tell you, they're not talking about it, and what they're talking about is, how can small businesses get access to health insurance for their employees or the cost of prescription drugs? And, and you know, at the time they had made the decision to move forward without even having any facts or having read the transcript. So what I think, when I'm listening to Arizonans, they don't want more partisan bickering. They don't want people trying to overturn what they didn't like in 2016. They can do that at the ballot box. The Senate Intelligence Committee, all senators voted for them to look into the matter. So I think we're being the adults in the room while we're seeing a lot of partisanship going on in the House. But when I'm listening to Arizonans, um, spending the days with them every single day, uh, they're asking about these other things that are impacting their families, and that's what I'm focusing on when I get back to deploy to D.C. next week. Well, a uh, new Washington Post poll came out yesterday saying that 58 percent of Americans supported this in inquiry. So. Uh, that begs the question I have to ask you, do you think it was appropriate for the president to solicit help from a foreign leader to research a uh, potential political uh, foe? Yeah, again, what I'm concerned about is how there was decisions made about moving forward and using the I word, which is very serious business for our country. It's a very solemn topic that's only happened a few times uh, without they without them even seeing the facts, Nancy Pelosi, Adam Schiff and others. So let's do this in a bipartisan way. If anybody has any concerns, and that's what the Senate Intelligence Committee is doing. Uh, new information is leaking out every single day. You guys can be the pundits. I'm going to spend my time being the senator. If this thing actually gets voted on, uh, which I would encourage the House to even vote to start the inquiry like they've done in the past, I think they're trying to protect some people from votes. But if it comes to the Senate, I'm actually a juror. Uh, the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court sits uh, in the chair in the Senate. And so my job is to be thoughtful, uh, to look at the facts, and to show good judgment. And in the meantime, uh, do a good job representing people for the things that are impacting their families every single day. Okay, sure. And we're not being pundits here. We're just trying to make sure people get the facts. I want yeah. to ask you this. Your colleague in the Senate, Mitt Romney, has spoken about President Trump's language with uh, China and Ukraine and asking to investigate the Bidens, and he yeah. said it's wrong and appalling. Do you agree with him on that? Yeah, and as I said, we all voted for the Senate Intelligence Committee to look into the entire matter instead of commenting on different things that are being said or leaked or reported or alleged every single day. Uh, I think in a very strong bipartisan way, uh, the Senate should address this issue seriously. And I, for those people who think this is like funny or a joke or a game or a way to, you know, go after their political foe, I just think as Americans, we should really be concerned about uh, how uh, easily people are sort of being very partisan about this. I think people want us to be thoughtful uh, and look at the facts and make a good decision. And people also want their voices heard at the ballot box. The presidential race is already underway. Uh, we have a lot of things that we can do between now and then. Uh, passing USMCA is something I hope the House brings up as soon as possible. They've been holding on for over a year, and this is really important for Arizona. So let's address this in a serious and solemn manner. Uh, I'm not going to comment day to day on new things that come out, but I am looking at the facts as they emerge, and in a bipartisan way, the Intel Committee is looking into it. I want to ask you now about the situation in Syria. Yeah. ABC <laughs> News just reported uh, about 20 minutes ago that Turkey has already already begun putting their troops in. Of course, it was announced Sunday by the president yeah. that we were going to pull our troops out. Uh, what concerns you about this strategy? I'm deeply concerned about it. Uh, I will tell you, we, I agree with the president, having deployed to the Middle East five times, to the region six times, uh, that we need to not be bogged down in the Middle East in these endless wars. Uh, we need to bring the men and women home. Uh, our big uh, rising threat is China. Uh, however, we have a generational fight against, Islam against Islamist terrorists. And ISIS, actually, think about when they had a caliphate the size of, you know, Indiana, and the SDF, these Kurds, actually on the ground fought against them. 11,000 of them died. And we used a small number of advisors and our uh, air power and intelligence for them to be able to defeat them. Uh, and I totally disagree with our NATO ally uh, now basically invading uh, another country uh, and potentially mowing these guys down. Uh, that is not the right strategy. Uh, we need to hold Turkey accountable. And I'll be working with my, uh, my uh, colleagues in the Senate uh, to do our part. Uh, NATO needs to step up as well. 
Uh, Senator Romney, Senator Murphy yesterday issued a statement saying that they want the administration to come to the Senate and talk yes. more about this strategy. Is that something you I, want to see? I absolutely agree. Again, the if you think about it, we did not have to send American troops to go fight ISIS to defeat the caliphate. The Trump administration used very in an innovative way for the Kurds to fight on the ground with our help. And they took a lot of casualties. And so we should not be standing by while a NATO ally uh, is actually now potentially going to be uh, attacking them. And the ISIS fighters who have been held in prisons by the SDF are now at risk of being released. Well, that, that so we need more information for sure. I disagree with this approach. Mm -hmm. I do agree with the... Uh, the uh, uh, objective of us mm -hmm. moving away from the Middle East, but let's do it in a thoughtful way uh, that isn't turning our back on these fighters. Well, sure, and that's the worry now is the, the fear that the president, that the strategy essentially is turning our back on the Kurds who have helped us so much yeah. in the fight with ISIS. I want to move on and talk about the 2020 election. It's going to be here in about uh, 13 months. I want to ask you this. In 30 years, Arizona has gone from 11 percent independent yeah. to now about 33 percent, so uh, really a third here. It seems like Campaigns on either side sometimes have a hard time tapping into those people. Why is it that you say maybe uh, it's a, we have a hard time reaching out to independents sometimes? And what is your strategy to include those independents and make sure yeah. everyone has a seat at the table? Well, I'm here in my official capacity, so I can't get into a lot of campaign stuff. I feel like the last campaign nearly just ended, even though we're you know on our way into 2020. But I will say Arizona has a reputation of being independent-minded. Uh, and each individual has their own concerns for them and their family. As I traveled the 15 counties in Arizona, which are very diverse in my first 90 days, uh, People had a lot of different views on a lot of the hot issues of the day, but I'm always looking for what are the, where does the Venn diagram overlap? You know, what are the things that are unifying that they care about? Job opportunities, small businesses are still looking for workers. It's a good problem to have. People getting the right skills and not going into student debt in order to get those skills and education. Uh, the cost of health care and prescription drugs, these can be unifying issues. And that's what I'm focusing on in the Senate. Uh, and really, if they look at my record so far, getting the drought contingency plan passed, uh, the land exchange bills, supporting our military, addressing these issues of lowering drug costs, uh, that's what most people care about, even though it appears we're super divided. I want to mention, too, you actually just got back from a I trip did. from the Middle East. I did. Uh, I was out visiting the troops uh, in the Persian Gulf. I was on the USS Abraham Lincoln. Uh, aircraft carrier and in the Straits of Hormuz on the destroyer, the USS Ramage. I also was driving in Saudi Arabia without a burqa on, which was very cathartic for me. I fought for eight years in the military for our U.S. service women to not have to wear burqas and sit in the back seat of the car and all the other bad policies they had. I also visited the oil infrastructure that was bombed by the Iranians there. And I met so many Americans uh, on these naval ships and at these bases, so many Arizonans these teenagers all the way up to those who have been serving over 20 years that are out there right now sacrificing their families are back here they don't know when they're going to be back uh, they are doing amazing stuff and i was so proud to visit visit them and thank them for all they're doing okay senator martha mcsally we want to thank you so much for being with us unfortunately we are all out of time right. we appreciate Thanks. you stopping by great it's good to be here okay we'll send it back to you guys in the studio